Love stories are usually inspirational and end with a happy ending. But there are also romantic tales that can end in tragedy, such as the famous story of Inés de Castro, the only posthumous queen of Portugal. Born between 1320 or 1325 in Galicia, baptized with the name Inés Pedro de Castro y Valaderes, she was the illegitimate daughter of the Galician nobleman Pedro Fernández de Castro and the Portuguese noblewoman Aladonza Suárez de Valaderes. In fact, Inés de Castro was a descendant of both Portuguese and Galician noble lineages and was also an illegitimate member of the Castilian royal house in Spain. Like many noble women, Inés was a lady-in-waiting to the queen, the Infanta Constanza Manuel de Villena, engaged to Peter I of Portugal, the son and heir of King Alfonso IV. When Inés arrived in Portugal in 1340, she was approximately 15 years old and was part of the Queen Constanza's entourage. The beautiful young Inés soon attracted Peter's attention, and he fell madly in love with her. But Peter was still married to Queen Constanza and could never assume a relationship with one of her ladies-in-waiting. As was the case with most royal marriages, Peter and Constanza were married for political interests rather than for love. The prince neglected his legitimate wife, jeopardizing the delicate relations with the Castilian crown. The solution was to maintain a secret affair with Inez, which eventually became public after Constanza's death in 1349. King Alfonso IV of Portugal was alarmed by the libertine behavior of his son and heir. After all, Peter had friendly relations with Inez's brothers, who were also Castilians. Alfonso feared for the country's independence after his death and warned his son of several times to break off the affair with Inez, but to no avail. Alfonso IV's fear was well-rounded. Inez de Castro's brothers began to conspire to convince Peter to consider himself a legitimate contender to the throne of Castile and Leon. This would allow a nephew of theirs, the future son of Peter and Inez, to rule a powerful, unified Iberian kingdom, ending Portuguese independence. After Queen Constanza's death, Peter and Inez began living together openly. The couple had four children, Alfonso, who died in infancy, Beatrice, born 1347, John, born 1349, and Denis, born in 1354. Peter's legitimate son with Constanza, Ferdinand I of Portugal, was a fragile child. On the other hand, Peter and Inez's illegitimate children were thriving, creating even more unrest among the Portuguese nobles, who feared the growing Castilian influence over Peter. In 1355, Alfonso decided that Inez's presence was too great a political risk to the Portuguese royal lineage and decided to execute her. Unaware of what was going on, Peter was away to attend a hunt, a typically noble event that could last several days. Three assassins, Peru Coyu, Alvaro Gonçalves, and Diogo López Pacheco, were sent to the monastery of Santa Clara a la Vella, Coimbra. Inez was being held there by the order of King Alfonso. According to some accounts of the story, he personally followed the assassins to the scene. Inez de Castro, only 29, begged the king for her life and that of her children, but she was beheaded, allegedly in front of the infants. She was buried in the city of Coimbra. When Peter learnt of this, he swore revenge. Allied with Inez's brothers, he led a revolt against their father, starting a civil war in Portugal. When Peter took over the crown after Afonso's death in 1357, he went after Inez's murderers and managed to capture two in 1361. Peter personally executed them at a public event, ripping the murderers' hearts out in the most painful way possible, saying that men who killed an innocent woman cannot have a heart. The third murderer escaped and survived, possibly fleeing to Spain. It was rumored that he had not participated in the murder and even tried to dissuade the other two. Peter declared that he and Inez had secretly married, making her his lawful wife and queen. He had large marble tombs built for both of them in the monastery of Alcobaca. After several years of Inez's death, Peter had her body exhumed, bringing her remains from the convent of Santa Clara in Coimbra to the monastery of Alcobaca. According to historical sources, Peter forced the entire royal court to swear allegiance to the new queen. She was placed on a throne, adorned with a diadem and royal robes. The king demanded that all the nobility of the kingdom approach and kiss the hem of the dress or the queen's cadaverous hand, paying the deceased a tribute she had not been given in her life. Peter died a few years after this episode, on January the 18th, 1369, when he was 46 years old. 
he was buried next to his beloved Inez, with their bodies facing each other, so that, according to Christian beliefs, on Judgment Day, they would rise and embrace each other after the resurrection of the righteous. Although some points of this story have been romanticized and even altered over the centuries, becoming almost a legend, the tragic tale of Inés de Castro and Peter is one of the most famous stories in Portuguese and European literature, stirring the imagination and interest of people all over the world.